Let's have a look at how to multiply by 10. Multiplying by 10 is generally pretty easy. So for example, if you had a straight up number like 7, and you wanted to multiply that by 10, the answer is easy really. It's the same as 7 times 1, which of course is 7, and then you just kind of move this 0 across, end up with 70. And that works with pretty much any number, so long as it's a whole number, and that's what we're going to get into a sec in a second. So first of all, let's have a look at some more complicated numbers and multiplying those by 10. So if you had 43 times 10, you can use the same sort of theory as we did with the 7. It's nice and easy. We know it's going to be 43 10s. 430 is our answer. Um, and pretty much on and on. You can multiply any number by 10, even if it's quite large. Say you had 43,897 times 10. I could take that number and it feels like what we're doing is just taking the zero and popping it onto the end there. Now I've heard people say all you have to do is add a zero. I can see what people are saying there, but the problem is what we're really doing is shifting its place value. Um, and I'll try to explain how that looks in a minute. In practice though, to multiply that by number by 10, popping a zero on the end has the desired effect. So multiplying 43,897 by 10 gives us 438,970. You get the right answer. What I want to explore today is why we get the right answer, and then what happens with numbers that aren't whole, like decimals or fractions. Let's have a bit of a play. So then look at this, an old favourite of ours, the place value house. In this case, it's the ones value house. We've got ones, tens and hundreds, and you've probably seen other ones too, where they have the thousands house, which has one thousands and ten thousands and hundreds of thousands. We won't get into that right now. What I want to look at is just the very, very basics of things. So we've got our place value house. Now, the first question that we had there was seven times ten. Seven in this house would look like this. So when we talk about adding a zero to make it 70, what we're really doing is shifting this from the ones value into here and making it seven lots of 10. We're multiplying that number by 10. That's why it looks like we're adding a zero. What we're actually doing is shifting the seven across into the tens place and popping a placeholder in the ones place because there's nothing in there anymore. So I want you to keep that in mind because this place value idea is really important when multiplying by 10 or dividing by 10. So we're going to have a bit of a play with some numbers that are not whole. Let's have a wee go with that now. Have a look at this new number, 3.5 times 10. Well, going by the old adage of throwing a zero on the end, would we get the right answer? Mm, let's try it out. We'll do it in a different colour. So I've got 3.5 and I'll just jam a zero on the end. Oh dear. It's actually not worked at all because that is exactly the same number. I've got a different placeholder there, but I haven't actually multiplied 3.5 by 10 at all. All I've done is jammed a zero on the end. In fact, I could do that as many times as I like and it won't make any difference to the fact that this is still 3.5. Right, so what do we do instead? So I've redrawn my place value houses. Um, the ones is a wee bit odd in that it is the only num set of numbers that appear both in a fractions house value and uh, whole numbers. So there's a bit of a crossover in the ones. So for example, if I was to write 3.5, it would look like this, wouldn't it? I've got three ones. Dennis the decimal pops in there. That's to indicate that everything after him is part of a number. 
and we've got 5 tenths, 3.5 is how it's normally said. When we multiply by 10 in this case, we can't just throw a zero on here. There's nothing in the hundredths uh, value place anyway. But just like we did with the 7, what we want to do is shift them across. So what does that look like? Well, it's pretty easy. We take the 3 and shift it into the 10s. So the 3 goes there. And we take this 5 tenths and shift it into the 1s to make 5 holes. Now you could still have tennis to the decimal there if you wanted, but it doesn't make any difference. Really, what you want is those two numbers there. It's going to be, oh, you can't see that there, 35. <coughs> what have we done in practice? Well, an easy way to think about it, if you've got a decimal number and you multiply by 10, you can shift Dennis, the decimal, across 1, like that. So 3.5 becomes 35. Decimal there. And a 0. So it is still easy, but it's important to know what we're doing with those decimals. What we're really doing is shifting the place value by multiplying by 10. The numbers stay in the same order. Um, if you had, I'll, I'll give you another example. Sometimes people get confused when there is a zero in the middle and they think, oh, I must somehow shift that around a little bit. Say you had a number like 20.5, similar to our last one, except we've got 20 and there's a zero in the ones place already. Now, when we want to multiply that by 10, we still do exactly the same thing. We're shifting the place value across. So in fact, it's actually helpful in some ways to do the uh, calculation straight underneath. When I multiply by 10, all of these are going to be shifted across. There's going to be nothing here. I can put a point 0 if I want. Then 5 goes into the 1s, the 0 goes into the 10s place, and the 2 We'll go into the hundreds place. So my new answer will be 205. 20.5 times 10 equals 205. People get confused sometimes and they go, oh, it must be, um, oh, I don't know, uh, is it 25? Because they think, well, there's nothing there, so maybe I can press the numbers. Um, is it 215 because I must put something in the zero? No, you can just leave the numbers in exactly the same order. So 205, in this case 20.5 becomes 205, 205 by multiplying by 10. The digits that you start with must stay in exactly the same order. What about very, very tiny decimal numbers? In this case, it's zero. 0 0.0072. It's a tiny fraction. It's very, very small. Can I still multiply that by 10? Absolutely I can. Um, we just do exactly the same process of shifting them across in the place value. So in this case, the 7 would go there into the hundredths. This 2 would shift from the tens of thousandths into the, south, into the thousandths. The zero moves across here, so there's nothing in the tenths, and then this all stays the same. So I can still multiply that by 10, I just end up with a slightly less, uh, slightly bigger number, still very small, 0 0.072 is a tiny fraction even so, but it's still 10 times bigger than that. We've shifted its place value by multiplying it by 10. So at home, See if you can have a go at these ones. These are easy ones. What is 8 times 10? 13 times 10 and 64 times 10. So just pause the video here, um, jot down your answers and see what you come up with. I'll be back in a second. Good, hopefully that was enough time for you to have a bit of a play with it. So 8 times 10 we know that all we have to do is shift its place value. We're going from 8 
ones to eight teens. There's nothing in the ones anymore, so it becomes 80. 13 times 10. The 10 and the 13 becomes 100. The 3 becomes 30, but there's nothing in the ones. The answer is 130. Then, 64 times 10, same sort of deal. The six tens become six hundreds. The, six, uh, the four ones become four tens. Forty, and there's no ones. Six hundred and forty. How did you go? Good. Well, let's try some of the decimals. Have a look at these ones then. All decimal numbers. In this case, 5.4 times 10, 7.8 times 10, 0 0.25 and 0 0.061. Have a go. See what you come up with. Again, pause the video here and I'll get back to you in however long it takes you. Good. Well, hopefully you've starting to, you're starting to get the hang of this now. 5.4 times 10 in practical terms, if I want a really quick answer to this, I can just cover up that, can't I? I can cover up decimal, the dentist to decimal there. My answer would be 54. But what I've really done is shifted its place value. That 5 has gone into the tens, and these 4 tenths have gone into the made 4 ones. Okay, same with this one here. 7.8 becomes... Instead of seven ones, seven tens. Instead of eight tenths, becomes eight ones. The answer is 78. You'll notice that the numbers are in exactly the same order. Five, four, five, four, seven, eight, seven, eight. Okay, this one here, there's nothing there in the zero. But we can still shift them over one place value. So instead of 0 0.25, the answer would be 2.5. Hopefully you got that one. I've taken these two tenths, multiplied them by 10, put them into the one value, so two tenths becomes two ones, five hundredths become five tenths, 2.5. Much smaller number down here, 0 0.061. These are hundredths, quite small, and these are thousandths. Very small parts of a number. Multiply by 10 though, still easy. I know that there's going to be nothing in the ones. We're not going that far. But if I shift this one across here, and this one across here, and work it out pretty quickly, my answer is going to be 0 0.61. Still much less than 1, but uh, 10 times bigger than 0 0.061. But, I hear you say, what about fractions? Can we multiply existing fractions, parts of numbers, by 10 that aren't decimals? For example, a third. Absolutely you can. It's a slightly different process, though. Uh, we still use our place value shifting idea, but we only do it to the numerator. As you know, the numerator is the top number, denominator is the bottom number. So, what would happen then? One third times ten would become ten thirds. Ooh, okay, so we've got an improper fraction. It's a still a valid fraction, they call it improper because the numerator is bigger than the denominator. We've talked about that sort of thing before. How can we make this into whole numbers plus a fraction? Well, it's pretty easy, really. All we have to do is figure out how many times 3 will fit into 10. In this case, 3 fits into 10 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. And you've got 1 third left over. So 1 third times 10 would be 10 thirds, which is the same as 3 and 1 third. What if your fraction is a non-unit fraction? So you've got 4 fifths of something, and you want to multiply that by 10. Well, again, it's easy. The actual 
main part of the maths is not difficult at all. We know 4 times 10 is 40, so it's going to be 40 of those sections that we're talking about. As always, the denominator doesn't change because that indicates how many times we've chopped it up. It's going to be 40 fifths. Then we've got the same thing again. We've got this uh, massive imbalance here. We've got a huge numerator and uh, our denominator is a much smaller number. The amount of times our unit has been chopped up. So, again, we can figure out, move that across, how many whole numbers we've got in that. And it's pretty straightforward. How many times does 5 fit into 40? Eight times. So, 4 fifths times 10 comes to a total of 8. Oh, that's a bit interesting. How would you like to have a go for yourself? All right. Just give me a second to set one up for you. Have a try with these two. See what you come up with. 1 seventh times 10. 3 quarters times 10. Pause the video here. Have a go. So the first one. 1 times 10 is 10. That's going to be our numerator for our new number. Then 7 tenths, what well, we're talking about, sorry, sevenths, not 7 tenths, sevenths, stay the same. That's how many times the unit's been chopped up. How many times does 7 fit into 10? Once. And you've got 3 sevenths left over. So 7 times, 1 seventh times 10 would be 1 and 3 sevenths in total. All right. 3 quarters times 10. bit more interesting, this one. We know 3 times 10 is 30, so there's going to be 30 of those things. We've chopped it into quarters or fourths. So, the next question then is, how many times does 4 fit into 30? Oh. Uh, you might have to use your 4 times table a little bit to figure that out. But... You're going to get in 20, uh, 28 is the number that fits in, which is uh, 4 times what? Well, yeah, see if you can work it out. 4 times 7, isn't it? And how many have you got left over after 28? You've got 2 fourths, which is the same as a half. So, 3 quarters times 10 is 7 and a half. Oh. Now I just wanted to have a bit of a closer look at this symbol here. Times. Now this sentence works, this number sentence works. 3 quarters times 10 equals 30 fourths, which is the same <coughs> as 7 and a half. Can we replace this times with another word that still works? And it's just a different way of thinking about it. When you're dealing with fractions, times can be also said as of. So if I was to rewrite that, 3 quarters of 10 equals 7 and a half, or... 7.5 that makes sense um, think about 100 if you had 3 quarters of that it would be 75 wouldn't it so 3 quarters of 10 would be 7.5 so we can replace when we're dealing with fractions and multiplying by um, other numbers we can say 3 we can use the word of instead and sometimes it works better in our heads 3 quarters of 10 is 7.5. Well, I hope you had fun, guys. Um, have a go at a few of those yourself. Don't be afraid to have a play. Experiment with the numbers. What happens when you multiply by 10? What if you multiply by 10 again and 10 again? It's okay to try and see what happens. Okay, catch you later. Bye.